Hello everyone, welcome back to our virtual Mishtaburah Shir. We are holding a Mishtaburah Chel Tvav and Mir Hashem in this Shir. We will be learning Dav Kuf Nun Beis Amin Aleph. We are continuing to learn Hilchus Megillah. We pick up in the midst of Simon Tuf Reish Peiches Sif Aleph. We are discussing the halachas of cities that were walled from the times of Yeshua Ben Nun. Din Krachim Hamukafim Chayma Mimois Yeshua Ben Nun. We know that the Megillah gives us two different days for the reading of the Megillah and the keeping of the Mitzvah Hayyim. We have Yudalid and Tesvav. And what we learn in the Megillah, what we learn in Mesechtis Megillah, those of you who are learning Dafyomi learned this not all that long ago, we know that regular cities, generally speaking, most of the world, they keep uh, Purim in the Mitzvah Hayyim on Yudalid Adar, the 14th of Adar. However, Cities that were walled from the time of Yeshua ben Nun, they keep the Mitzvah Hayyim and they hear the Megillah on Tesvav, what we colloquially know as Shushan Purim. And the reason for this is because Shushan was different than the rest of the world at the time of the Nes of Purim. We know that most of the world, the, when the Nes of Purim occurred, they were given by Achashverosh the 13th of Adar, as a day to weed out their enemies and wage war and eradicate their enemies. So they waged war on the 13th of Adar, they rested on the 14th of Adar, and they made the 14th of Adar a day of Yom Tov. That's when they heard the Megillah, that's when they did Mishlayach Manas, Matanus Lavyanim, Sudas Purim, etc., etc. Esther Hamalka went to Achashverosh after the 13th, and she asked for a special dispensation for the people who lived in Shushan. Shushan was the capital city. I'm guessing that they probably had more enemies in the capital city than they did elsewhere. And therefore, Esther Amalka asked Achashverosh that the people of Shushan should be given an extra day to eradicate their enemies. They should be able to wage war against their enemies on the 14th of Adar as well. And that's what the people in Shushan did. So they waged war on the 13th and the 14th, and therefore the 15th of Adar became the day that they rested. That's the day that they rested, and they kept as a day of Simcha and the Mitzvah Sayyim of Purim. Now, we learned that the Chavetz Chaim yesterday, very interesting. You would have thought that Chazal would have said they would have patterned the keeping of the 15th of Adar after Shushan, and you would have thought they would have said cities that are similar to Shushan, in what way? Well, Shushan was Mukaf Chaima, Shushan was a city that was surrounded by a wall, Mimais Achashverish. So you would have thought Chazal would have said other cities that are Mukaf Chaima, Mimais Achashverish, they also should keep the Mitzvah Sayyim Atezvav, but that's not what Chazal did. Instead, they said cities that were Mukaf in Chaima, Mimois Yeshua bin Nun. And the Mishnah explained the reason they did that was Lechvaid Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael at the time of Purim was Nechrav. It was during the Gullus, so it was lying in ruins mostly. Therefore, there weren't cities in Eretz Yisrael that were Mukaf Chaima. Had Chazal said that cities that were Mukaf Chaima, Mimois Achashverish, should read the Megillah on Tezvav, that would include a lot of cities in Chutzlaretz, but it would not include any cities in Eretz Yisrael. And that would have given a chashivus to cities outside of Eretz Yisrael over cities in Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, Lechvoid Eretz Yisrael, Chazal wa that cities that were Mukaf Chayma, Mimais Yeshua bin Nun, should read on Tezvav and keep the Mitzvah Hayyim on Tezvav. Not just cities that were Mukaf Mimais Akashverish. And now it would include cities in Eretz Yisrael as well. And we're going to go right to today on this theme discussing the halachas of who reads on Yudalit, who reads on Tesvav, what exactly are the requirements of a city that's Mukaf Arechaim. Now, a lot of what we're going to learn today is based on several Ma'amore Chazal, Ma'amorim that are set over in the Gemara and Megillah on Gimel Amid Beis in the name of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. The first one that we're going to discuss is the Halacha of Asara Batlonim. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi says over here on Gimel Abed Beis, he says, V'amar Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Krach she'ein bay asara batlonim. 
a walled, uh, a walled city that does not have a Sarabat London. Ten people that are bottled from Malacha. They're unemployed. They don't do work. What does this mean? Rashi says, Asara batlanin, shebetelin mi malachtan. They don't do any work. Why? Not just because they lay the gaze. Sheyu metsuyin tamid bebeisakneses. So that they should always be in the beisakneses, in shul. Shachris v'arvis, day and night. Kida arminam bebeisakneses brachis. Like we learned in beisakneses brachis and vava bebeis that we need people to always be in the Beis HaKnesses when it's time for Tefillah B'Tzibur. Why? Because Kevin Shabbat Kaddish Baruch Hu Beis HaKnesses. Because if the Rabbi Shalalim comes to the Beis HaKnesses at the time of Tefillah, V'loi Motza Sham Asara, and he doesn't find 10 people that are ready for Tefillah B'Tzibur, Miyad Kayas. The Rabbi Nishalim Chas V'Chalila right away is Bekas. He's Shari Bekas, he's angry at Klal Yisrael. Therefore, it is of the, the utmost import that we have 10 people to be found in the Beis HaKnesses always ready for tefillah. So that it is never a suffolk that it's going to be time for Shachris, time for Mincha, time for Mairev, and we don't have 10 people ready for tefillah with Zibur. So a city of note, an important city, had to make sure that they had 10 Batlanin. And therefore, therefore, Says the the says Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi that you have to have a that a krach she ain't by asar batlanin nidon kikvar a krach that doesn't have ten batlanin that does not have a din of a krach that has a din of a kfar that has the din only of a small city. Now the Gemara asks, my kamash balon exactly what was Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi um, teaching over here? We don't need Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi to tell us this. Tanina, this is a beferish of Mishnah in Megillah. Ezo here ir gedayla. What's considered an ir gedayla? What's considered a large city? Kol sheyesh basar batlanin. In order to be considered an ir gedayla, that city has to have ten batlanin. Pachas bikan. If you don't have ten batlanin, if you have less than ten, harez a kvar. Then it's considered a kvar. So the Gemara wants to know what did Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi have to teach us here? And for the Gemara, krach it strichle. The Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi was teaching us the halacha of a very significant city, a large significant city that has a lot of marketplaces and a lot of, of businesses. Like Rashi says, krach it strichle. The kol krach ene elamokim shvokin. This is a place of marketplaces. And therefore, Shadikhnasim Shami called Sad. People are always traveling into this city. The Gadol who Yosemi Ir Gedola. This is even bigger than what, what you would normally think is an Ir Gedola. And therefore, the Gemara says, what Rabbi Shuman Levi was telling us is, Afal Gavdimi Kloi Leme Alma, even though there are always people coming into this city. And since there are always people coming and traveling into the city, really in such a city, you might think, I don't need to have designated Asara Batlanin, right? If you have people that are constantly traveling, traveling into the city to come to the marketplace, obviously these people who are coming to the marketplace, they're not employed in a nine to five job. They might be employed in a nine to five job in their home city, but if today is a travel day and they're in this city with the marketplace, they're not busy with a nine to five job. So it is time for Mincha. They're going to go to Shul for Mincha and they'll be there. The point is that such a crack. Such a place, place which is a mokim shvakin, which has plenty of marketplaces and people coming and going, you would think maybe you don't need a sarabatlanin in order for it to be considered an ir gedayla. Kamash balan, Rabbi Shum and Levi, that no, even such a krach has to have yud batlanin. The Mishnah that tells us ezer here ir gedayla kol sheyesh ba sarabatlanin. That was talking about a regular large city. Not a city that always has people traveling into it, just a large city. That, the Mishnah says, you should know, in order to be considered an Ir Gedola, it has to have Yud Batlanin. Comes along Rabbi Shomad Levi to tell us a bigger Chiddush, even a Krach, a very significant Mokim Shvakin, a very significant city that always has people traveling into it, they also must have Yud Batlanin in order to be considered an Ir Gedola. Now the question is, this Mimer of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, 
what bearing does it have on the question of a city that's mukaf chayma mimais Yeshua benun? Does that have any bearing on that halacha? We didn't see the words over here, big city, the, a, a walled city. The problem is that the word krach, usually in the Gemara, is a reference to a walled city. So a simple reading of Rabbi Yeshua Levi would seem to be krach, a walled city. Even though it's a walled city, if they don't have Yud Batlanin, it doesn't get the halacha of a walled city, of a krach, and they don't read on Tesvav. Instead, they're Nidon Kikfar, and they read on the 14th. That would be a simple reading of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. But Taisus says not that way. Taisus says, Krach she'en bayud batlan in Nidon Kikfar, Tzarech loimar demayri bestam krachim ha'amurim betalmud. This is talking about a regular garden variety large city. Aval hamukav chayma mimais Yeshua ben Nun. But a city that's mukav chayma mimais Yeshua ben Nun, afilu ein bayud batlanim, even if they don't have yud batlanim, kairin betesvav. They read on the 15th of Adar, not on the 14th, and Tysus brings a raya. So again, to sum it up, we have this mimer of Rabbi Yishub and Levi, who tells us that there is this concept of ten batlan. In order for a Yiddish city to be considered a city of note, it has to have ten batlanim. There have to be at least ten people who is they are free from any other involvements. They're not Isaac Bimalacha, they don't have jobs. What do they do? They are in shul. Rashi says, why do they have to be in shul all the time? Because they have to be ready all the time for for Tvilu Bitsiber. We're gonna see, I'll give you the Lushan of the Pirish Mishtais Laha Rambam and the Ran as well, because the Mishnah Brewer is going to be Mitzayin them. But Rabbi Shubin Levi definitely says, in order to be a city of note, you have to have Yud Batlanim. The question is, even though Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi said the word krach, which usually means walled city, is this referring to an ir hamukav chayma mimais Yeshua ben Nun? And what Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi was saying is, for a walled city to read on Tezvav, they have to have Yud Batlanim, but if they don't have Yud Batlanim, they read on Yud Dalit? Taisa says no, that's not what it means. And Rashi doesn't indicate that that's what it means. Rashi doesn't say that that's what it means. But Taisa says clearly that that is not what it means. Now, the question is, if that's not what it means, what, what Rabbi Shubin Levi meant, then what did Rabbi Shubin Levi mean? In the context of what halacha? Is it nidain, not like an irgdala, but rather nidain like a kfar? Right? That's what Rabbi Shubin Levi said. So again, the simple way to understand it is a crack, a walled city that doesn't have Yud Butlanim, doesn't have the din of a crack of a walled city. Instead, it's Nid on Kfar. So they don't read on Tesvav, they read on Yud Dalin. But Taisa says that's not what it means. Taisa says Rabbi Shubin Levi is talking about a city that's not walled. So then what did Rabbi Shubin Levi mean when he said that it's not considered an Ir Gedoyla, it's considered a Kvar? So the answer to that is in the first Mishnah in Megillah. The first Mishnah in Megillah says that there's a difference between an Ir Gedoyla, a large city, and a Kvar. A large city reads the Megillah when on your Dalit. It's not a city that's surrounded by a wall. They don't read on Tesvav. It's just a large city without a wall. When do they read? They read on Yodalit. That's an Ir Gedoyla. Then there's a Kfar. A Kfar is a village or a small town. When do they read the Megillah? They also read the Megillah on Yodalit. But the Mishnah told us on Beis Amin Aleph, they have a Kula. The Kula that they have is, they have the right to be Magdim Liyayim HaKnisa. They could advance the reading of the Megillah to the Monday or the Thursday before your Dalit. Because that's the day that the small the people of the small towns would go into the Ir Gedolah, either because that's when Bezdin is available, or whatever it is, on the Yom HaKnisa, on Monday or Thursday, which is the Yom HaKnisa, the day that the village people go into the big cities, they could read the Megillah on the Yom HaKnisa before Yodalot. Says Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, in order to be considered an Ir Gedolah that must read on Yodalot, you have to have Asara Batlanim. If you don't have Asara Batlanim, 
then you're nidad kikfar. Then you get the kula that you could advance the reading of the Megillah to the Yom HaKnisa. Now, the Rishonim talk about why that should be. Why should an Ir Gedola get the right to be Magdim the Kriya to the Yom HaKnisa? The small villages and towns, the Chazal gave them that Kula because we needed the village people to provide food and drink for the Ir Gedola for the Suda of, of Purim. But the Ir Gedola, there doesn't seem to be a reason for them to have that Kula. So the Rishonim and the Achreinim talk about that. But nevertheless, according to Teisvis, that's what Rabbi Yishuv and Levi was talking about. With that little uh, preface, not so little, it was actually a long preface, let's go to the top line of Kuf Nun Bey's Amid Alf. Says the Mechaber, A walled city be Vais Yeshua bin Nun, Va'afilu ein behem asara batlanim. Even if they don't have asara batlanim, Pirish, what's asara batlanim? Betelim mi malachtam, people who are not busy with their work. Va'oiski betzarche tzibur, and instead they are busy with tzarche tzibur. A walled city lanes on Tezvav, even if they don't have Asar Batlanim. Because the Bechaber is paskening like Teisvis, that Rabbi Yishuv and Levi is not talking about a walled city. When Rabbi Yishuv and Levi says, in order to have the din of a krach, you have to have Asar Batlanim, he didn't mean a walled city. A walled city has the din of a walled city even if they don't have Yud Batlanim. And they read on Tezvav. That's not what Rabbi Shub and Levi meant. What Rabbi Shub and Levi meant was a different halacha. In order to be considered an ear gedola, you have to have Asar Batlanim. If you don't have Asar Batlanim, you're a kvar, and you can be makdim liyayim haknisa. Let's see Minish Tabruah is cut in baits. Va'afilu ein behen, that's the sheet of Taisvis. But, says the Minish Tabruah, v'yesh be'arishonim, you have the Ramban, the Rajba, the Magid Mishnah, v'yesh be'arishonim, shachol kanalzeh. There are Rishonim that argue on Taisvis, um svir luhu, and they hold, the bekrach hamukav choyma, that if you have a city that's walled, mimais Yeshua benun, Im ein ba ata asara batlanin, if they don't have at the present time asara batlanin that are always in the base of Knesses, kairin ba biyudalid, they read on yudalid. So these Rishonim argue on Taisvis, and they hold that Rabbi Yishuah ben Levi was talking about a krach hamukav chayma mimais Yeshua ben Nun. And still in all, if they don't have asara batlanin, they have a din of an unwalled city, and they read on yudalid. Ubi Adafrayim Mitzadet, and the Adafrayim takes the position, the Yesh Lachush Lishitasam, that you have to be concerned with the sheet of these Rishinim, Likrois Gam Biyodalit. And therefore, such a city, a walled city, Mimais Yeshua Binun, that does not have Asara Batlanim, they should lay in the Megillah on Yodalit and on Tezvav. Very, very interesting. Ois Katan Gimel, Vais Kibitzar Chit Sibur. The Ramaz said, These are Sarabat Lanama people that are always in the Basak Nessus. Well, he didn't say that. The Ramaz said, Pirish, what are Asarabat Lanim? Betalem mi Malachtam. They're not busy with employment. The Ois Kibitzar Chit Sibur. And instead, they are busy with Tzar Chit Sibur, with the needs of the Sibur. Says the Mishra is Katan Gimel, Vais Kibitzar Chit Sibur. Pirish, the Basak Nessus. It means that they're in Shul. Cain is the behead of the Gemara. That's what the Gemara says, that they're in the Beis HaKnesses. V'ayin sham b'pirish Rashi, and look over there in Megillah Hei Amad Aleph, in Rashi, Rashi says, D'hainu shem kvuin tamid lahashkim ulaharev b'beis HaKnesses lehispalim. It means that they are kavua in the Bismedrish, so they are always ready, early and late, in the Beis HaKnesses, ready for tefillah. V'ayin b'pirish ha-mishnayis la-rambam u-baran. The Chavetz Chaim is mitzayin. He sends us to the pirish mishnayis la-rambam and to the rab. The pirish mishnayis la-rambam says like this. He says, Shetihiye b'beis ha-kneses yud b'nei adam. There should always be ten people in the beis ha-kneses. Shaloi tiya lehem shum melacha. Who don't have any busyness with employment. They don't have jobs. Ela all they are busy with is Tzorchei Tzibor and learning Torah. Now it's interesting, the Pirish Mishnayis Law, Rambam, Rashi, they don't explain exactly what Tzorchei Tzibor means. It was, what are they busy with Tzorchei Tzibor? Tzedakis? Well, exactly what Tzorchei Tzibor are they busy with, that's not well defined. But the Pirish Mishnayis Law, Rambam says, they are busy with Tzorchei Tzibor and Talmud Torah. And they're kavua in the basic Now, the very fact 
that their kavua in the basic nesis gives you an indication of what kind of tzarchit tzibur they're busy with. Not all tzarchit tzibur could be dealt with in the basic nesis. So the fact that their kavua in the basic nesis gives an indication that this, it sounds like Tyro Utvila. That's what it sounds like. That's the Pirish Vishtayin Slar Rambam. The Ran, I, I, I'm paraphrasing the Ran. I mean, the words that I'm going to read to you are the words of the Ran, but I skipped around a little bit because he quotes other Rishayim, and I took that out. So the Ran says like this, What are these Yud Batlanim, Kiloimar, Shebetelin Mimalachtan, they are bottled from Alacha, Sheyu Muzumanin Kal Shalit Tvila, so that they should always be available for Tvila. Kida Arinon on Brachas Vavam and Beis, like we learned in Mesechus Brachas Vavam and Beis, Loi Matza Shom Yud, if Chas Chalilu the Rambam comes to the Beis Haknesses, he doesn't find ten people. Miad Koyes, Ella Kol Shem Ashkinum Mashkimim Uma Ariven Liyos Bitsuyim B'Shas Tfilu the Beis Haknesses. These Yud Betelim, these Asara Betelim, they always have to be ready for Tfila in the Beis Haknesses. That's who they are. That's what they're there for. Okay. Now we go weiter. Okay. Now we have another mimer of Rabbi Yishuv and Levi, also on Gimel on the base. Vama Rabbi Yishuv and Levi. Rabbi Yishuv and Levi says like this: Krach, a walled city. Now over here, Rabbi Yishuv and Levi definitely means a walled city when he says Krach. Vama Rabbi Yishuv and Levi. Krach, a walled city. Sheyoshav that was settled, ule besoif hukaf, and then it was walled. So this was not always a walled city. People got together, they built houses, they built streets, they built a yishuv, they built a settlement, and then at some point in time, they decided to wall the city. Says me, Bishuv and Levi, Krach sheyashal ulubasayf hukaf, a city that was settled and then walled, nidain kikvar. It has the din of a kvar. Okay, zokt rashi. Sheyashal ulubasayf hukaf, a city that was settled and then surrounded by a wall. First it was settled with houses. And then it was surrounded by a wall. It has the halacha of a kvar. Okay, if I stopped right now, what are you all thinking? You're thinking, okay, we have a halacha that a krach, a walled city, reads the Begillah on the 15th. An unwalled city, Mimais Yeshua Benun, reads the Begillah on the 14th. Rabbi Yeshua Ben Levi says that's only true if the wall went up first and then you built the houses. But if you built the houses and then you put up the wall, then it doesn't have the din of a walled city. Instead, it has the wall of an open city, and therefore they laid Megillah on your Dalit, right? That's what you would say. But now let's hear the last words of Rashi. Rashi says, Nidon Kikvar, this city that was settled and only then walled, has the din of a kvar, of an open city. Le'inyin bate are choyma. In the context of the halachas of the houses of a walled city. What halachas is Rashi referring to? We know that there's a halacha in, in, when, when we're in Eretz Yisrael, when we live in Eretz Yisrael, and we have malchus Yisrael, and we're, we're, um, we have our own malchus. The halacha is if you sell a city in Eretz Yisrael, if you sell a house, I'm sorry, if you sell a house in Eretz Yisrael, you could always redeem it you could always buy it back from the one that you sold it, sold it to. But not in a walled city. In a walled city, if you sell a house, you only have a year. You have a moratorium. You have a year in which you could be paid to the buyers. You could buy the, the house back from the buyer. But after a year, now it belongs to the one who bought it. Says Rashi, this mimer of Rabbi Yishub and Levi. Rabbi Yishub and Levi says, when is this true? It's only true in a city that was the wall went up first and then the houses were built. But if the houses went up first and people lived there first and then the wall went up, that's not Batayari Chaima. That's not the house of a walled city. The house went up before the wall went up. So it's not a house of a walled city. And Rabbi Shub and Levi brings a riot from a Pasuk by the halachas of Batayari Chaima. Rabbi Shub and Levi says, because the Pasuk says, da 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 where is it? My timer. Dixiv, because it says in the Pasuk, the ish kiyim kar base moishav ir choyma. It has to be a base moishav ir choyma. It has to be a, a house 
that was settled when it was an Ir Chaimah. But if the house was settled before it was an Ir Chaimah, then it doesn't have the halacha of, uh, of Batei Ari Chaimah. So what's clear from this Rashi? What's clear from this Rashi is, this mimer of Rabbi Shub and Levi, does it have anything to do with Hilchus Megillah? No. It has absolutely nothing to do with Hilchus Megillah, according to Rashi. But, you take a look at Taisus, Taisus says, not that way. Taisus says, Pir Shakuntris de Le'inyin Batei Chaimah Ari. Rashi learns that this is only Negea to the Halachas of Batei Ari Chaimah. And uh, Taisus says, Vakasha, he asks a kasha on that. And he says, Taisus, Taisa says, no, this Rabbi Shub and Levi is talking about Megillah. So here again, we have a machlekes rishayim, how to understand this mimer of Rabbi Shub and Levi. Nu vazak the mechaber. Says the mechaber, the second line, kuf nun beiz aleph. This din of that a, a city that's mukaf, chayma, mimais Yeshua ben nun, lanes on tesvav, for hu shavukaf achakach yashav, that's only if the city was surrounded by a wall and then it was settled. And if you take a look at the Be'er HaGoyla, Ice Cut and Hay, Memra de Rib Shub and Levi Sham. This is the Mimer of Rib Shub and Levi. And again, we're Paskin like Tysus, not like Rashi. The Machab is going like Tysus, that Rib Shub and Levi was talking in the context of Hilchas Megillah. In the context of Hilchas Megillah, in order for a city to have the status of Mukav Chaima, Mimais Yeshub and Nun, so they lay on Tesvav. It has to be that the wall went up and then it was settled. Or at least, says the Mechaber, the Mechaber qualifies it a little bit more. First, the Mechaber says, yoshav. It has to be that the wall went up and then it was settled. Oy, or, sheyoshav tchila, or the city was settled first, but al das The people who put up the houses, put up the houses with the understanding that once they have a settled city, they're going to put up a wall. So again, it has the din of a walled city because the people who put up the houses, they knew that they were going to wall the city. Maybe they had to raise funds first. So they, they said, yeah, this is going to be a walled city. They attracted people to come, build houses, everything else. Then they did a fundraiser and they went ahead and they built the walls. But they always knew that it was going to be a walled city. So if the wall went up first, that is Mukaf Chaim Amimesi Shubanun. If the houses went up first with the understanding that there was going to be a wall, again, that's Mukaf Chayma Mimais Yeshua Benun, they lay on Tezvav. But if the houses went up first with no plans of a wall, and then sometime later they put up a wall, no, they laid on Yodalit. So again, let's see it inside of the Mechaber. Yashav. It has to be that the wall went up and then the city was settled. Or, or at least, that the city was settled first, but it was with the understanding that they were going to put up a wall. This stands in contrast to if we know that a city was settled first with the understanding that there was not going to be a wall, then that's not Mukaf Arechoima. You can't call that city Mukaf Arechoima. And even if ultimately a wall went up during the time of Yeshua ben Nun, that city lanes on Yudalit, not on Tesvav. Says the Ramah, Avo Mistama, default, we don't know for sure. Hukva Ulubasayf Yashva, we see a city and we don't know all of its history, but as far back as we know, it always had a wall. We know it had a wall. Mimais Yeshua Benun. But do we know the story? We don't have access to the original city charter. We don't know. Did the houses go up first? Did the wall go up first? Did the houses go up with the understanding that they were gonna make a wall? Did the houses go up with the understanding that there was gonna be no wall? We don't know all of that. All, all, all of that information we don't have. So yeah, we don't have access to the city charter to know exactly what they were thinking when they built the, the city. So Mistama, says the Ramah, Avo Mistama, Hukva Ulubasayf Yashva, the assumption would be that the city was surrounded by a wall first and then it was settled. So says the Ran. Let's see Mr. Boris Kotendal. La Afuke Kishenoida, Avo Mistama, 
Arina and Shiyashav Adas Lakifakakak. The normal, the default position is that a city was built with the understanding that a wall was going to go up. Most of the cities that are walled, that was usually the scenario. Even if they don't put up the wall right away, you could normally assume that that was the understanding when they built the city, that this was going to be a walled city. Not shot that a city grew and some, at some point suddenly they decided to put up a wall. Now, there's an interesting Bir Alacha here. Bir Alacha, Dibra Maschel, Al Das Sheloi Lahakifai. You see, what the Mechaber said was if you have a city where the city was built with the understanding that it was going to be an open city, then that city lands on your dollar, not on Tesvav. Bir Alacha says, how about the following scenario? How about a city was built on the understanding that it was going to be an open city? Okay. Then they went ahead. And they put up a wall. Okay. So right now, that city would lay on your Dalit. Because, yes, it has a wall, Mimais Yeshua bin Nun. But the wall went up after the city was settled. And when the city was settled, it was settled with the understanding that there would be no wall. That's exactly the city that the Mechaber says, even though it's Mukaf Chayma, Mimais Yeshua bin Nun, they lay on your Dalit. But asks the Bir Alacha, how about if now people started moving into the city and putting up houses. Now, all these new houses that are going up, they're going up in a city that's Mukav Chaimam, you might see Yeshua Benun, and they're building houses with the understanding that the wall is there. So does that change the status of the city? Says to be our Lacha, yes. Says to be our Lacha, Hainu, Deloy Nivdu Babatim Chadashim Lacha Shehukva. When the Mechaber says that if a city was built with the understanding that it was going to be an open city, and then they built a wall, and that wall was up, it has a din of an open city, and they lay it on your Dalit, that's if no new houses were built after the city went up. But if they built new houses, so forget about the houses that were there before the wall went up. Now there are houses that are there after the wall went up. So now we should get the din of a walled city on the on the smach on the basis of the houses that went up after the wall went up. The near Ali, the Chavetz Chaim says it seems to me it does lead about Saruba. You should go after Rov. Then Rov bought them Shabbir Kadmo lehakefan. If most of the houses of the city went up before the wall. Karim be your dalit, they would lay it on your dalit. Vim ibcha ibcha. But if it's the other way, if most of the houses that are in the city now went up after the wall, they should lay it on Tesvav. If you do a census and you find it's an exact 50 50 split, Tsarachian. Okay. Now we go to Sif Beis. And again, this is based on another mimer of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi says, Other Rabbi Yeshua and Levi, Krach, a walled city, the Chala Samochloi, and everything that's close to the walled city, the Chala Nira Imoi, and every city that could be seen together with the walled city. What that means is that if you go into the walled city, you could see a town from the walled city. Nidon Kikrach. They all have the din of a walled city. So when we say that a walled city has a din that they lay on Tesvav, it's not only the walled city. It's the walled city lanes on Tesvav and all of its outlying towns, even though they do not have walls, they are captured by the din of the walled city. Now, what's, how do we decide what's considered an outlier of the walled city? So Rabbi Shubin Lady told us two things. If it's Samuch, if it's close to the walled city, and if it's near it, if it could be seen from the walled city. Then we have a Brysa. The Brysa expands on this Mayim of Rabbi Shubin Lady. Tana, a Brysa taught, uh, uh, Tana taught the Brysa. Samuch, the, if it's close to the walled city, it has the din of the walled city. Afa Pisha Nira, even if you cannot see this village from the walled city, but if it's close, 
It gets the din of the walled city. Nere, if it could be seen from the walled city, then it has the din of the walled city. Even though it's not close. The Gemara wants to know, how, how do you understand these scenarios? You want to tell me that you could see it even though it's not close and therefore it gets the din of the walled city. I understand that. If you have a village that's on the top of a mountain, so it might be very distant from the walled city, but the people from the walled city could still look up and see the village. So that village, it's nearer. It could be seen from the walled city, the Enoi Samach, even though it's not close. But since it's nere, it has the din of the walled city. But what's the scenario of close but it can't be seen. So the Gemara says, I'll tell you, Rabbi Yirmiya says, Sheyesheves Benachal. You can have a village that's located very much lower than the walled city. The walled city is on top of a mountain, and this outlying village is deep in the valley. So the people from the walled city can't see it, but it's close. Since it's close, it gets the din of the walled city. That's the mimer of Rabbi Shuman Levi. Says the Mechaber Sif Beis. V'chein. Also, not only the walled city lanes on Tezvav, the the cities that could be seen together with the walled city, which means the villages that you could see from the walled city, even though they're not walled, they get the din of the walled city. Even if they're not close by, like the village is on the top of the mountain. So you could see it from the walled city, but it's not close. It gets the din of the walled city, they lay Megillah on Tezvav. Or a village that's close to the walled city. Even if you can't see the village from the walled city. The village is down in a valley. So the people from the walled city can't see it. Does it matter? They get the din of the walled city. They lay on Tezvav. But they have to be within a mill. What does that mean? You want to know what Samuch means? This last case of the Mechaber. Smuchim lahem. The village is close to the wall city. Even though the wall city can't see it. They get the Din of Tezvav. When? If they're Samuch. What's considered Samuch? They're not more distant than a mill. What's a mill? 2,000 hours. Approximately 4,000 feet. Kedehiluch mil, the time it takes to walk, the distance you can walk in 18 minutes. That's called Samach. Okay. Ube Shushan, but when it comes to the Allah of Shushan, even though Shushan did not have a wall at the time of Yeshua, Karin Betezvav, they lay on Tezvav on the 15th, Hail Venasa by Nase, because that's where the Nase occurred. That's where it happened that they fought on the 13th and 14th and kept them in Sayyim on the 15th. Says the Mishnah Baraz Katnei, HaKvarim. Mechaber uses the word V'chein HaKvarim, the villages that could be seen together with the walled city. What that sounds like is you have a walled city and then you have nearby outlying villages. Now, it's very easy to understand that a village, a small village, could be considered an outlier of the nearby walled city. But what if it's not a village? What if it's a very large city? What if it's an Ir Gedola? Maybe an Ir Gedola that's close by to a walled city is not bottled to the walled city. Maybe it has its own din. And even if it's Nira, and even if it's Samuch, maybe they lay it on your Dalad. Says the Mishnah Baran, no. That's not what the Mechavi meant. You can't be Medayik in the word Hakfarim. For who are Dinah Yorais? Large cities have the same din. They're also bottled to the walled city. He brings this from the Nesiv Chaim, the Chen Kasev B'Meiri. Ice Cotton Vav, the Mechavi said, this din of Nira, that if, that if it could be seen from the walled city, he said, I'm sorry, Smuchim, the Mechaber said, if it's Samach, if it's close, even though it's not near it, even though you can't see it from the walled city, it has the din of the walled city. We said it means that the village is located down in a depression, so you can't see it from the walled city. Says the Mechaber, in Ois Katan Vav, Zek Kaya the Samach, this is going on this last case. The Hainu Shahaya Samach, we're talking about the city that Samach, the Ene Nira, it has to be within a mill. Aval Nira, but a city that can be seen from the walled city, right? You have a city that's 20 mil away from the walled city, but it's on top of a mountain. So the people from the walled city could see it. I feel mil. Even if it's twenty mil away, have it crack. It gets the din of the walled city. That is the opinion. The 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 uh, the Chavetz Chaim brings it down 
Well, he makes some diuk of whatever it is. Um, but there is a difference of opinion. There are those who say, it brings down a rekeach, the, the rekeach says that the nira also has to be within a mill. Shushan is different. Because it's a beferish of in the Megillah that they made the Yom Tov of Purim on the 15th. Siv Gil. Kfarim va'ayarais gedailais. Villages and large unwalled cities, large significant cities, but they don't have walls from Yeshua ben Nun. Karin beyodalit, they lay on the fourteenth. Ois kotn ches karin beyodalit. Interesting halacha. Mi shedinoi likroi betezvav. Somebody who lives in a walled city, mi mais Yeshua ben Nun, his halacha is to lay in the Megillah on the fifteenth. You want to hire him as a Balkara in, in an unwalled city, in a small village, whose halacha is that they lay in on your Dalit? He can't be Maitzi the Tzibar on your Dalit. You know why? Because in order to be Maitzi the Tzibar, their Chayv, you have to have the Chayv. This guy doesn't have a Chayv. His Chayv is on Tezvav, down your Dalit. The Chayv Lehepech, so to the other way. If the people in in the ear that's Mukav Chaim and Mimais Yeshua Benun, they want to hire a Balkar from a Kfar? No. The the Ben Akfar, the villager, can't be might see the people in the ear Hamukav Chaim and Mimais Yeshua Benun because they don't share the same day of Chiv. Kevichain and Machuyev Atav Adamer. So says the Prichadosh. However, Far Prima Gadu Kasav, the Prima Gadam writes, the Bidiyeved in Ben Krach, Karl Ben Yadal, be Yadal Yatza. The Prima Gadu says, not so fast. He says, if the guy from the walled city, whose Iker Chiv is on Tesvav, if he lanes for a village, Bidiyev, they are Yotza. I was going to read the Sharetziyan inside, I'm not going to read it now because we're going a little over time. I want to make sure to finish the page. I didn't realize how long this was going to take. He says this is based on a Yerushalmi because the Yerushalmi says a very interesting thing. The Yerushalmi says that really the Iker Chiv is Yodalit. Most of the world lanes on Yodalid. Therefore, the Iker Purim is Yodalid. Right? What do we say now? Purim, Yodalid. Shushan Purim, Tezvav. But Purim is Yodalid. So the Rishami suggests that the Iker Chiv is Yodalid. And therefore, Bidiyevit for sure, we don't say that there's such a thing as a person who doesn't have a Chiv on Yodalid. Even the fellow who lives in the Irmuk of Chaim and Mimais Yeshua ben Nun, he still carries Epis a Yud Dalud Chiv, enough for sure that he could be might see somebody from a village on Yud Dalud. Now we go to Sif Dalud, says the Machaber. Krach Shehu Safik and Hukaf Bimei Yeshua and Lav. We have a, a city, a walled city. We have a Safik. We don't know for sure if it was Mukaf Mimais Yeshua ben Nun, if not. Karin be Yud Dalud. The Mechaber says, Safik, they should lay in Yudalid, Tezvav, both nights, but they should only make a bracha on Yudalid, because like we just said, Yudalid is the Zman Kriya, Leroy Ha'olam, says the Bishtoraz Katnitesh, who's Safik, U Tiveria, says the Chavetz Chaim, the city of Tiveria, Tzarech Likreis Babi Yodalad and Tezvav, they fit into this Safik category that they have to lay on Yodalad and Tezvav. Why? For a very interesting reason. She Safik im Hayam Chashiv Kichayma. Those of you who are learning Daf Yaimi, you may remember from the Sechus Erevin, a Yam could be considered a wall. You have a Mavoi that ends in a Yam. The Yam is sometimes considered a wall. So Tiveria is on the coast. So we have a Suffolk. Maybe that's considered a Yam. Maybe that's considered a Chayma. She Suffolk is in a Yam. Chashev ki Chayma. Over Medina is Elu in our region, says the Chavetz Chaim. Bekrochen amukafed Chayma in our regions, in, in Europe, especially North America, if you have cities that are surrounded by walls, ain lehistapik shemo mukafed mimais Yeshua benun. We don't have to worry that maybe there were mukaf Chayma mimais Yeshua benun. We are to the north, or Rechaikim Eretz Yisrael, they're very far from Eretz Yisrael, Viyadua, and it is well known and established, says the Chavetz Chaim, these areas were not inhabited. These parts of the world, the new world, these parts of the world were not inhabited in the time of Yeshua bin Nun. Ice cut and yud, karim be yudalad tesvav. These areas of Safik have to lay on the 14th and the 15th. The Nahagid Simcho Matanas Lavyayna Bishtayim, not only Kriyas Megillah, but Sudas Purim, Simcha, Matanas Lavyayna, they should do everything on 
both days. Ice cut Yudalif or Yavarech. However, the Mechaber said they only make a bracha on Yudalit. Sha bracha, I feel a bit shall tire who midrabanan. A bracha is always a din drabanan, even by Mr. Daraisa. Right? It's still only a din drabanan, the bracha. Vim came, but Davashu is suffic. So if you have a suffic, leaning a bracha, who's fake a drabanan. The bracha is zicha, a suffic drabanan. The choshkin, but that's who mitzvah shall devrem, the kuliyame, it's our bracha. Megillah is bechlal, it's a drabanan. And this that you could make a bracha on the fourteenth, because Yodalid is fart the chiyuv for Rava Olam. Therefore, even if this city that we're mesupik about, even if really their din is really to lay on the fifteenth, im karbi yamdalid yatsub the avid, like we said from the Yerushalmi, v'loy have your bracha lavatola, and therefore it would not be a bracha lavatola. And so concludes today's page of Dirshu Ba'alacha. Thank you so much for joining me for Liman Hatera, the Schuss of Liman Hatera, Shimi Megan, and Anskla Yisrael, the Rosh of Shesed Yeshua's for Fuas Parnas, and Shaduchim to all those in need. We should be zaycha to see the BS called Sedek, Bimherov Yamenu Amen. Be well.